Good morning. Good morning. It is good to be here with you. Welcome to Faith Lutheran Church's online worship service. I'm Pastor Kurt, and I'm glad to be here with you for worship this morning. Now, if you're used to our normal situation where you're looking in at the, the sanctuary where we worship, this is a little bit different for you. And that's because on the second Sunday of each month, we have what we call our faith and food worship service, where we have a potluck meal with some really good food. And then we also have our service during that meal. And we have more of a discussion format instead of the normal sermon format. And so we found that didn't translate very well online. So you have a special online service just for you. So today we're going to be looking at the book of Amos and looking at how we deal with uh, when God calls us out on our sin or when somebody calls us out on our sin through God's word. So we're going to be looking at that today. I invite you to fully participate in this worship service, to sing when we're singing, to speak in those parts when you would speak. And so in order to do that, you need an order of service or a bulletin. So if you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook, there should be a link in the description that has today's date in it. If you click on that link, it will take you to a page on our website, which is faithwesleychapel.com. And on that page, you'll have the video embedded, but you'll also have that order of service so you can follow along. If for some reason you don't see the link, just go to faithwesleychapel.com and click on live stream, and that will take you to the page as well. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. As we gather today, let us cleanse our hearts and our consciences by confessing our sin to God. We take a moment to reflect and confess in our homes. Let us join together in confessing our sins. Heavenly Father, we confess that we are sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you and against our neighbor in our thoughts, words, and actions. We are truly sorry for our sins and sincerely repent of them. We ask for your mercy. For the sake of Jesus Christ's bitter suffering and death, please forgive us and renew us that we may walk in your spirit to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Lord has heard your confession. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of the Lord, in his stead and by his command, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, so we're going to continue actually a little differently than even we do in our all of our services. We're going to go to the Apostles' Creed next, and uh, we'll have our prayers after that, and that's because we're doing things a little bit different after after the sermon. So just follow along and you'll do great, but let's continue with uh, professing our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, if you normally have an offering as a a part of your worship, then just so you know, if you're on that faithwesleychapel.com website, you can click on the Give link, and uh, you can give online in that way. We're going to go ahead and continue with the prayers of the church as well. Um, So there will be a time later on in the prayers where you'll be able to pray for people whom you personally uh, know who need prayer. Uh, Normally we take prayer requests, but we can't do that in this format. Uh, But let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Preserve your church, O Lord, for your name's sake. Answer us in your righteousness and in your faithfulness. Since you have sent us forth in this world to testify to your word, let us 
find conviction and confidence in our confession that our salvation is found in the forgiveness of sins through Jesus Christ alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the church, we commend to you all ministers of your word. Make them zealous and faithful that through their service your kingdom would grow. Turn the hearts of all who hear from the love of sin to the love of you. Give them wisdom in their work and joy in their calling. Send laborers into your harvest. Embolden all of us to bring your word to all people, for we know that by your word hearts are changed and people are saved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Preserve your blessed estate of marriage, Lord. Let chastity be prized among your Christians and honored also in the world. Bind husband and wife together in love and forgiveness. Equip them by your spirit with every good gift to care for and to teach the children you give. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You, Lord, are king over all all the earth you bring ruin and wicked uh, you you bring ruin on wicked nations and their rulers and are no respecter of persons lord spare our nation and its leaders let the conduct of our civil servants and of our people be wise just and honorable in accord with your revealed will for the sake of jesus christ be merciful to those who oppose you and remember that your desire Remember that you desire all to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we know you love your children. We bring before you every need of body and soul. We take a moment in our homes to pray for those who we know need the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have blessed us, Father, in your beloved Son. And in Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sin. As you have sealed us with the promised Holy Spirit for an eternal inheritance in him, bring us in repentance and faith to receive your forgiveness and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. To you alone, Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. Our first reading for today is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 37 to 41. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 17 to 20. For it was Herod who had sent and seized John and bound him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because he had married her. For John had been saying to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted him put to death. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man. And he kept him safe. When he heard from him, he was greatly perplexed. And yet he heard him gladly. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. We continue with our sermon song, which is When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you would please bow your heads and pray with me. 
Heavenly Father, we pray that you would be with us this morning, that you would open our hearts and our minds to your word to hear what we need to hear. Lord, keep us from shutting it out or pushing it away. And by your spirit, help us to understand it, to believe it, to accept it. Lord, we pray that you would be with me as I preach, that I would preach faithfully today, Lord. And we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So today we're going to be looking at a passage from the book of Amos. And Amos was a prophet, and he, he was a prophet to Israel. This was a little bit before the exile. And so this is after, however, Israel had split into two nations. So there's Judah on the south, and there's Israel on the north. And so Amos was called by God to bring a message to Israel. And today we're going to look at one of those messages that he brought, as well as what Israel's response was, and learn a little something for our own lives in how Israel responded versus how we would respond. So where we're starting here, this is in chapter 7 of the book of Amos, and there's been several uh, pages of calling out nations and of judging nations as well as and especially Israel. And now we have a series of three or a series of five visions. We're going to be looking at the third vision. The first two visions, uh, Amos, he, he sees the vision, he delivers it to the people, but then he also pleads for the people and God relents in his judgment. These are visions of judgment. And then second one, same thing, vision of judgment. He gives it to the people. He pleads for the people and God relents. But now here we'll see in this third vision that it goes a little bit differently. So let's take a look at this. Starts with this. This is what he, that being God, showed me, that being Amos. Behold, the Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line and with a plumb line in his hand. Let's stop here for a second and make sure we're understanding this scene. We see the Lord. He's standing over a wall that was built with a plumb line. What does that mean, that it was built with a plumb line? It means that it's straight, right? It is a, a good, straight uh, wall that is, it's, you know, it's 90 degrees. It's exactly how it's supposed to be. And so he's holding, though, a plumb line as well. So it was built with a plumb line, but he's holding a plumb line. And what's the purpose of that? Well, that's to see if the wall is still plumb. Right, so it was built straight and, you know, without crookedness, without it being twisted and all these things. It was, it was perfect. And now he's going to see if it's still like that. Now, this is looking at Israel. And so the wall is Israel. And, and what the Lord is saying here is he, he built up Israel and he built it up plumb. He built it righteous, good, straight, right, and true. But now he's here to judge. And see, are they still righteous and true? Or have they become crooked and unrighteous? Have they you know, become twisted in how they are? So let's continue on. And then the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, behold, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people, Israel. I will never again pass by them. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate. The sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Let's start. Let's stop there. This is the end of that vision. So now when the Lord, he's judging them, right? And when he says he will never pass by them again, what is he saying? Well, we've had two visions before this where the Lord came. He judged. He said, this is what's going to happen. Amos pleaded and the Lord relented. And now he's saying, we're not doing this again, right? You have had warning after warning. You have been judged and found guilty multiple times. And I've relented. They've had many chances. Now, what did they do when they had these chances? Nothing, right? They did not turn. They did not repent. They didn't turn from their sins. They didn't turn to the Lord. And so now he's saying, this is it, right? Third strike and you're out. This one is it. I'm not passing by here again. This is the judgment. And so he says that the land's going to become desolate and the sanctuaries of Israel are going to be laid to waste, which may sound a little odd. Like, why would he lay to waste the sanctuaries, the worship places, until we realize those worship places have become worship places not for the Lord, but for many 
many false gods. Many idols had been brought into these temples. And these temples weren't even where they were supposed to be worshiping, right? God had had, uh, had them build a temple in Jerusalem long time ago. And when, the, when Judah and Israel split, Israel now built new temples that never really should have existed. And now they'd even, to make it worse, they brought in other idols, including a golden calf, if you can believe it. And they were worshiping these false gods. And that then changed their hearts and it changed their behaviors, their attitudes. And so they begin neglecting the poor. They begin uh, to have injustice in the land. And of course, they're worshiping false, go- false gods and they're doing all kinds of other, other sins in addition to this. But I want to think about that because oftentimes this is where the sin starts to creep in. We start to start to idolize something apart from God, something outside of God, a false idol. And it starts to change how we think about things and it changes our behavior. It can even change our perspective on that behavior. You know, this this kind of starts to move us in the wrong direction. And it, it not only perverts our behavior, but our attitude about that. I mean, think about this. Think about this. Okay, what happens if you do something wrong and you're following the Lord, right? And you're, and you're there with, with other Christians and everything. You might be called out for it. They might say, hey, what you just did there, that was wrong. And then you would be brought to repentance, right? Which is good. Good that you are brought to repentance. But now... Think about if you're worshiping another God, right? Or if you are in your mind idolizing something over God. Well, now, do I get called out on that? Or do I feel like I'm doing the right thing? Because this is what this idol says to do. In fact, I may even feel righteous in my behavior because I'm doing what, well, what people do when they idolize this thing. Let's think about it this way. You know, if, if I worship at the altar of the Lord and I go take advantage of someone for monetary gain, right? I know it's wrong because the Lord has told me that it's wrong and other people will call me out and hopefully I'll turn in repentance. However, if I worship at the altar of money and greed, well, taking advantage of someone might seem okay. That might be all right. It gets... You know, it it may even be that I say, well, you know what? I'm actually getting rewarded for this. I'm getting more money for this. This is good. And then other things start to happen. It becomes easier to ignore the poor because I've got what I need. And those people, they need to just get their act together. I don't need to help. It starts to change our behavior, our attitudes, and we may even feel proud about the shameful behavior that we do. This is where it starts, right? It starts when we start looking at something other than God, putting that in our hearts. It changes our thoughts, our actions, and eventually can even take us to the point where we don't want to listen to God's word on this anymore. And that's what happens here. Let's take a look at this. Let's go back to our passage here. Let's continue on from Amos. So he, we have had the, the judgment vision given by Amos, and now here's the response. Then Amaziah the priest of Bethel sent to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the midst of the house of Israel. And the land is not able to bear his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall shall die with the sword and Israel must go into exile away from this land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah and eat bread there and prophesy there. But never again prophesy in Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary. It is the temple of the kingdom. Let's stop there. Notice the way Amaziah twists the words of Amos and twists what Amos has done and said. Right? Not only does he take some of the things that Amos says and then kind of take them out of context, twist them around a little bit, but then he frames the whole thing as a conspiracy against the king. He leaves out the part that this is a message from the Lord and that the Lord is judging Israel. It's just about this guy, Amos, who's conspiring against the king. And he even tries to go against Amos and kind of insult him. 
right? When it talks about, you know, go to the other land and eat your bread there and, and all of this, right? There were professional prophets. There were professional seers who would go around from town to town and they would give what they were saying were prophecies. These were usually con men, charlatans, and they would say what they thought people wanted to hear and then people would give them a little money, right? And they'd be able to go get their bread and eat their bread. And that was their living. And so what Amaziah is doing here is he is accusing Amos of being one of these charlatans, right? You're just doing this for the money. Go do that down in Judah. Stop talking against us. So what do we see going on here, right? Amaziah is, he wants to dismiss what Amos is saying. He doesn't want to hear it. And he starts to employ some tactics to, to deal with it, right? To, to get rid of the message because he doesn't want to hear it. And he doesn't want the king to hear it. He doesn't want the people to hear it. He's actually blocking everyone else from hearing it. And so he does three things. He tries to discredit the messenger to discredit the message, right? So if he can shame Amos and he can get people to not look to Amos, then, hey, they won't even listen to his message. They'll be like, oh, whatever he's saying, he's, he's that charlatan guy or he's a traitor. Don't listen to him. And we see that in, in today's society, don't we? Right? We, we have a message that comes to us, maybe a message from God, message from his word, and someone says it. And maybe they're saying it to us, maybe they're saying it out there, or whatever, but we, you know, wow, well, don't listen to that guy. What does he know? He's just some, some you know, person who doesn't know what they're talking about. Or, you know, I heard they do this kind of sin or, or whatever it might be, and they try to discredit so that you don't even listen to the message in the first place. Or maybe we do it ourselves, right? We do this internally. I don't need to listen to them. Who are they? You know, they, they do their own, their own stuff. What are they? They're hypocrites. Why would I listen to them? And we don't even take the time to consider the message. Because we don't want to hear it, right? Especially a message like this. A message of judgment, a message that calls us out for our sin. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. We push it aside. So that's one thing, right? He discredits the messenger to try to discredit the message. Then he, he twists the message. He tries to make it sound bad, right? He leaves out that this is from the Lord. He, he leaves out the judgment. He says, man, this guy, he's against us. And, and he's trying to, you know, Say, say all this nasty stuff against our kingdom. I mean, we're Israel. You shouldn't listen to him. He tries to change what the message is. The message is no longer, hey, repent and, you know, turn to the Lord. It's now, well, this guy, he wants to destroy us. He wants the Lord to destroy us. And he's talking, talking smack against us, right? Twisting that message. And sometimes we do that we, we do that ourselves. Maybe we'll, we'll hear a passage, we'll take parts out, and we'll kind of twist it around so that, oh, maybe it's not really really what it sounds like. You know, hey, it says judge not, lest you be judged. So if you, don't, you can't judge my sin. Now, we've pulled that out of context, haven't we? Because that passage is really saying that when we see sin in others, we need to remember that we too are sinful. Right? The judge not is that you're saying like, oh, you're going to hell for that without realizing that you should be going to hell for what you've done too. Right? The sin is there. We all recognize it. It's not dismissing the sin. It's recognizing that none of us deserve salvation, that it's only given to us by grace. Right? But the we tweak things and we try to make it more palatable. We try to make it not the thing that we don't want to hear. I don't want to listen to the message, right? That's what this is really about. And it really, it's like the serpent in, in Eden, right? Did the Lord really say? And he twists it just a little bit. And what do you do? You leave a little bit of the, the actual message in there so that it seems kind of valid when you've really twisted the whole thing around. Discredit the messenger. Twist the message. And lastly, he just says, get out of here, right? Silence the messenger. So that there is no message anymore. Get out of here. Flee. There's a threat there. When he says flee to Judah, that's like flee for your life, man. Get out of here. Don't preach against us. He's trying to get rid of the whole message altogether. So no one else can hear it. So he doesn't have to hear it again. Get rid of the whole thing. We do that today too, don't we? 
right? We cancel the person. We get them shut down. We walk away. We say, I don't want to listen to you. And we just end the conversation. We leave the church. Right? We do all these things. I don't want to hear what the Lord is telling me because we don't like to feel convicted. And when God shows us our sin, that's exactly what happens. But here's the thing. We need to hear that message. It's being told to us for a good reason. Right? We're being warned. Let's go back to our passage here. It continues on. Now Amos responds to Amaziah. It says, Then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I was a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore figs. But the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. Now therefore hear the word of the Lord. And what does he do there? Right? He's like, look, first of all, I am not one of those, those charlatan prophets that you're talking about. I wasn't a prophet at all. I was a farmer, man. But God took me, right? And that word took there, right? That implies that he had no choice either in what he was going to do or in the message that he was going to say, right? God took me and said, go do this. What am I supposed to do? If the Lord sends me. I'm going to go. So listen to the Lord. Listen to what is being said, right? And this is true with, with all messages from God, right? If you don't like the message, it's not the messenger who you have a problem with. It's God that you have a problem with. We need to hear the message. We can't shun it. We can't shun it. And that's really what Amos does here. Is he brings it back to this is from the Lord. You need to hear the word of the Lord here. Let's see how he continues here. Back to Amos. You say, do not prophesy against Israel and do not preach against the house of Isaac. Therefore, thus says the Lord, your wife shall be a prostitute in the city and your sons and daughters shall fall by the sword and your land shall be divided up with a measuring line. And you yourself, you yourself shall die in an unclean land, and Israel shall, shall surely go into exile away from its land. We'll pause there for a moment, right? Because what is Amos saying? Oh, I'm sorry. You, you want me, you don't want me to prophesy against Israel? You, you want me to just be quiet and leave? Guess what? Ignoring the message isn't going to change what's about to happen. In fact, you're ignoring the message is going to bring it right on, right? That is just going to bring this judgment on. Israel is going to be punished. The land is going to be destroyed and the people will suffer and be taken into exile. And here's the point, right? Ignoring the message doesn't change anything. Pretending the message is different, twisting it around so that you feel better about it, it doesn't change anything. What has to be done is what should have been done by Israel and needs to be done by us when we are confronted with our sin, with a word from the Lord, is you repent and you turn to God, right? You, you hear the message. You have to hear it. You listen carefully with fear and trembling. You take it seriously and you respond accordingly, accordingly. You turn away from your sins and you turn to the Lord. You change your, way, your ways and you fall on your knees before God and confess and seek his mercy. This is the only proper response. It's the only response that helps. Ignoring it doesn't help. Twisting it doesn't help. Sending the messenger away doesn't help. We can only respond in repentance and seeking God's mercy. Because this response, this response changes everything. And had Israel responded this way, who knows? Who knows? We saw what happened with, with Jonah and Nineveh. Right, the book of Amos is full of warnings and judgment. The nations 
they're judged. Israel is judged. There's these visions of judgment. In fact, it's, it's nine chapters of people being put in their place, being called out and judged. So almost nine chapters. Because just when all seemed lost, God gives a glimpse of the hope that is to come. Just in the last paragraph, just five verses at the end, hear this. <coughs> in that day, I will raise up the booth of David that has fallen and repair its breaches and raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the nations who are called by my name declares the Lord who does this. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes him who sows the seed. The mountain shall drip sweet wine and all the hills shall flow with it. I will restore the fortunes of my people and they shall rebuild the ruined cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink their wine, and they shall make gardens and eat their fruit. I will plant them on their land, and they shall never again be uprooted out of the land that I have given them, says the Lord your God. Just when all seemed lost, he says, actually, this isn't the end. I'm sending someone. Right? I am going to turn all of this around. We turn to the Lord in repentance because of the hope that was to come for Israel, the hope that has come, the promised Messiah, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. We turn to the Lord in repentance because he is a God who raises up the fallen, who repairs the breaches, who replants the vineyard in a barren land and causes it to flow with sweet wine and overflow with fruit. The same God who judges sin restores the sinner. Now, do you hear that? The same God who judges sin restores the sinner, restores you and me. In fact, God calls us out on our sin so that we will repent and come back to him for the mercy and forgiveness that he longs to give. Do not close your ears to the message. Don't send the messenger away. Don't twist things around. Don't remain in your sin. Turn to the Lord in repentance and be forgiven. Be restored. Be renewed be raised. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue with the Lord's Prayer, and then we're going to sing a song uh, called Lord, I Need You, which is a song of repentance. And this is a time that I want you to really think about the message today. Think about the sins in your life, maybe things that you've been hiding, things that you've been holding on to, things that you need to turn from. And we're going to have a time in this prayer and this, this song to give those over to the Lord, to repent, to confess and turn to him and seek his mercy. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. If you have confessed, brought some, some sin or maybe many sins to the Lord this day, 
I want you to hear again those words of forgiveness. First John 1 John 1.8 tells us that anyone who says that they have no sin deceives themselves and the truth is not in us. But if you confess your sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive your sins and purify you of all unrighteousness. Make it as if you've never sinned. So know that the Lord has heard your confession and he has forgiven your sins. So go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let me bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Let's praise the Lord with the doxology. Praise the Lord, for he is good. He brings his mercy new every morning. Amen. All right. Well, thank you for joining us for worship this morning. Uh, It is an honor and a blessing to be able to worship with you. A few announcements before we get going. Uh, Today is, uh, we are having another uh, Loving God with Your Mind Bible study after church. So if you're in the area, even if you weren't able to be at church, I invite you uh, to come by my house and uh, join us for some snacks and uh, Bible study there. And then we've got Aquatica coming up. So this is the last day and we need to have at least 15 people signed up. I can tell you we don't yet have 15 people. Um, so we need folks to sign up if we're going to be able to do this. And this is the last day to do it. It's $40 for, um, an adult ticket. Kids can come for free. The church is going to cover that. And, um, we, we hope you'll sign up. We hope you'll come have a great day, uh, for an extra eight bucks. You can add a meal, uh, usually like 15 bucks for meals there. So that's a nice little savings. Um, you can order online by going to faithwesleychapel.com. Click on that give link. Uh, it's in the top right of the, the screen and uh, or of the, the page there and uh, just select the Aquatica tickets when you place the order. Let us know um, in the, the comments if you have additional children coming with you. Uh, so do that today um, and we'll let you know uh, how all that goes. We've got a growth group or the, the actual trip, by the way, is August 3rd. That's a Saturday. Then we got growth group uh, not coming up this um, second second Tuesday, but we'll start again in August. So um, that's on August 13th. We got the Tampa Bay Rays game, uh, the, the Faith Day coming up. That's on August 17th. Tickets have already been ordered for that. And then we've got our back to school uh, end of summer youth game night. Uh, that's coming up on August 25th. And so we'll have more information about that coming out. Thank you for joining us for worship. I pray the Lord blesses you in this coming week. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful week. God bless.